Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to the York City save. Now, one game played since last episode, which was the third round qualifier against Kidlington, went as you'd expect for once. So, 4-0 away from home, everyone pretty much playing well. Harry Wright's under 6.7 in goal, that's mostly because he didn't have to do literally anything all game. Uh, no shots on target for them. That's why he's on a 6.7, because the game doesn't technically rate a goalkeeper if they don't actually have to do anything. Which makes sense, really, but almost feel like it's just say not applicable rather than giving him a number. As promised, I'm going to be bringing you Hereford, who will sit in fourth, just very close behind us. Uh, and then I'm going to skip the Alfreton match. I will bring you the result of it, of course, but I do want to bring you Solihull Moors. I didn't really want to be doing three episodes in a row where we don't actually technically progress through a month. So I'm going to bring you Hereford and Solihull Moors, and obviously provided we if we get through that match... Then I'll bring you the first round proper, wherever that slots in. I think it's somewhere in November. So here Moores, it is worth noting, of course, did end up fourth last year, I think it was. Let me just double check that. A second, sorry. They were second last year. Didn't actually get promoted. I think Salford were the ones who beat them through that. Yeah, because Leighton Orient won the league last time. Salford were the playoff winners. And not doing as fantastically this time around, though. They're not, you know, technically that far off. 19 is the marker point, and they're on 17. I mean, it's very tight, realistically, between 23rd and 7th. There's only 7 points separating all those teams. So, with that in mind, I think Sutton did quite well last year, didn't they, as well? So that's a little bit surprising there on the lower end of this. But, as mentioned, it is, of course, incredibly tight between these markers. That, that's actually generally kind of mad. And personally, I don't really see there's that much difference between, at the very least, the bottom end of the Vanarama and the top end of these uh, north and south. Mostly because they're just made of the teams that you know, kind of rotate between the two. But Sol Hill Moors were, of course, second last year and hopefully probably still have a team comparable to the one that took them to that point last time round. So it should be an interesting fight, that one, because, as I say, not doing as fantastically as they did last time round. They are regarded as favourites for the first time, a uh, team against us. I think Kidderminster might have technically been as well. Can't remember. But it's either very much the second time or the first time that we have not been regarded favourites for a match. And that being said... 6-4, 13-8, it is incredibly tight on that front, regardless. So that kind of shows you how good this York team is for the division, when it's actually almost factoring up against a team a league above, away from home. If we were at home, we would probably be favourites for this. But we've got to deal with Hereford and Alfreton first. Hereford, I'm actually going to bring you live, because they're fourth, and in the run-in behind us. They were the ones who actually drew a the last time around, so they actually did slip back one place. As a result of that as well. But one point behind Kidderminster now. Who play... Oh, Kingsland. So I don't think they've had a nil-nil since. We highlighted that. Nope, they haven't had a nil-nil since. We highlighted the fact they had four nil-nils in the first five games. Crazy, really. So we are regarded as favourites, so I'm not changing anything up here. The team is as it has been. Uh, Lopez will start this one, though, because he has put in better performance than McFarland so far. Although that rating is improving for him as well. Uh, so that's a little bit of an issue, but it's nice to have someone to come off the bench, necessarily. But Ferguson, Boom, Romano, still tempted. Griffiths, Kempster, Green, Nacelle, Moke, Lopez, Burrow up front, right in goal, of course. That's never going to change. Maybe it's a bit of risk playing Lopez without match fitness still, but there's not really a way to get him match fitness other than playing him. So I think they've basically got one player in my half. Defensive 5-2-2? Two, two. What do you mean, defensive? You don't say. Blimey. I generally don't think I've seen... More defensive formation than that. Now we're at home, so pick up where you left off. There we go. And off we go for another match then, as we immediately have a shot within the first few minutes. But And there's a highlight after nine-ish. Boom to the back post. That doesn't go in. Well, it does go in, actually. I'm not sure who's actually turned that one in. It was a own goal. I thought it was. It looked like a blue shirt had knocked that one in. And it was Shane Blaney, the unnecessarily rhyming defender, who, yep, yeah, Boom hits it again. Basically, Boom hits it towards the goal, Mooney just kicks it against his own defender in attempting to clear it, and 1-0. One of their players is on very low fitness already, and I'm not entirely certain if he started that way or if he's taken a knock. Well, the rest of this half has gone just gone, basically. There's n nothing else happened that half. Uh, it looks like we are having the better of the game, but we could do more shots on target. I will have a look to see if whether these have been happening outside the box or not. Um, don't get complacent out there. That seems to have done the job for once. I've said it before, but the complacency one does seem to be a massive, massive risk a lot of the time. Kidderminster clearly winning against Kings Lynn at this stage. As Kempster is in fight. Oh, 
I mean, he, despite the fact that he had a perfect line of sight on the goal there, he decided to smash it into the crowd of blue defenders. But Griffiths there now on this side, this high does continue and comes to safe hands from Brandon Hall. Now, comes to, of course, is our top goal scorer. And now I can see this. There's been five off target. Four long shots out of 11. This highlight actually isn't over. But four long shots out of 11 it isn't dramatically high, actually. So I don't think I need to change. I think he might even be on work ball into the box in the first place. Borrow is robbed. Mooney's offside. I'm pretty certain he's offside. Not that it matters. As Griffiths lumps that into the box. And I'm not entirely certain what happened there. But Burrow completely wastes that chance. How would completely bypass literally everyone else on the field. No idea how we got away with that free kick. But... Well, this game is just... I'm so glad I decided to bring you this incredibly uneventful game. Uh, Ferguson... I mean, Boom's not having the best of games. 6.4. Comes to 2, so... I don't like changing defenders. But I will change this entire left-hand side. Just because Ferguson's been booked and he can't do full wing back, so... That'll do us. That'll do us for the time being. Kempster's actually having a rare bad game for him as well, which... Doesn't happen often, but Green now in the middle. Gives it off to Nacelle, who just loses possession. That's hoofed up, and I'm I'm assuming, yep, goalkeeper gets that one. Now, it's going to take something dramatically for go wrong here if it... Yep, fine, that's gone through to them. Nacelle's got the ball back now, after initially losing possession. This He's done it again, he's lost possession again. Fairly certain Pope tackled him from behind there, but definitely got away with it. Kane passes it off to Dawson, Pope once more... This highlight's taking forever. Can we just get to the actual point of this highlight now? That'll be wonderful. Um, is he is he offside again? I'm not sure. Is he actually onside this time? Looks like he might have been. And what was that about needing to not slip up one more time? Still looked offside when the ball was played. But we might actually see a highlight that includes the offsideness, which will prove me wrong. No, we don't. Make an attacking sub, I think. Shout demand more than we've had 22 shots, 7 on target, 66% of the possession, and this is going to be played out as a 1 1 draw. Really? Really? That's how this is going to play out? As that somehow stays out of the goal. This, oh, as well as I say, it looks like we're about to be FM'd out of this game, but Kid and Mr. have actually slipped up as well. It is worth noting. They're on 31 points. Kings Lynn have just equalised. So at this stage, we're actually leapfrogging them because Paddy McLaughlin. First goal of the season, came on for the current top goal scorer for us, got his goal, and now it's 2-1, and we actually do leapfrog Kidderminster as a result of this, as Kings Lynn level things up over there. Well, it's incredibly shiny pitch. Um, he gets a bit lucky there, Griffiths, because I think Griffiths went for a shot himself, but it ricocheted and landed into the path of McLaughlin. And that is 2-1. Can we now not be attacking? That'd be great. Although Griffiths has got on the end of this, Burrow does? No, McFarlane it ends up with. I'm not sure if Burrow actually got the... Never mind. I think Burrow did actually get the knock on there, rather than just ricocheting off the defender for a third time. Griffiths swings this one in. Why do we get so many highlights in injury time in the National League? It's crazy. It happened in the games you don't see, but it, it, pretty much every game that I've highlighted for you guys, we've had about four, five, three, four, five highlights in injury time alone, as Dawson just runs up the entire pitch and... I mean, you'll struggle to see a worse shot. Right, uh, might take this eventually. We're not even on time wasting. There's no need for him to do this as he just passes out to Boom. Oh, Kidderminster have scored in the 90th minute. Of course they have. Of course they have. As Nacelle, Pope, Boom smashes it there. This has got to be the yeah, full time. I'm not actually sure how to end this. For once, I think my assistant manager might be underestimating this. Some of that performance was disappointing. The performance actually wasn't that bad. We did end up winning and we should have won, in fair. Like, there was no, no doubts about that. We had the better of this match, and possibly we should have won more more easily. I'm not sure if that was good English, but I'm not, not going to say that was a good win. I mean, it was a good win for us, and the fact that Hereford were fourth. Don't you let yourselves get complacent on the next match. I can't really say better opposition, but Burroughs seems to have lost confidence. I am going to agree with my assistant manager a little bit, but not, not to the degree that we played badly, if that makes sense. I can't believe they got a 96th minute penalty. 96th minute penalty. Penalty. You're actually kidding me right now, right? I mean, yeah, 91st minute winner for us, but I'm intrigued to know if we can see the stats for this. Oh, they did, did in fairness, deserve that win. They actually missed a penalty five minutes earlier. Well, ten minutes earlier. All right, they deserved it. But yes, that kind of says everything about that match. And yeah, maybe we didn't. Technically, I mean, we only scored one goal ourselves because the other was a known goal. But anyway, Alfreton midweek, and I'll bring you the result of that, but we will be playing the Solihull Moors game live instead. See you shortly. 
So I'm bringing you the result on this page because there's another reported one on here. Yeah, you might have seen it. 8-2 Kidderminster. It was looking all right in the first half-ish, um, although that did technically happen before half-time, I now realise. 50, 45 plus 3. Didn't get the notification until after half-time. Yeah, Jake Wright, who we've sent on loan to Boston, equalised things up at 1-1. I thought, OK, doing us a favour at this point. And then they just crumbled. Crumbled. 8-2. We, meanwhile, bloody got away with it. We were 2 up, missed another penalty, and then got a 93rd, 93rd minute winner, which, again, was deserved on the balance of play. I was going to make a comment, actually, in this video about how penalty seems to have died down a little bit. After getting two in the first game, I think we've had one between then and now, or so, maybe, maybe two. So it does look like they have drawn in the penalties being given away just a little bit, because they were all over the place in the beta. And then we got two in a match, so... Well, I'll see you for Solihull, but 3-2... Keeping pace, although goal difference now is a little bit more of a problem. Great. 8-2. Right, so the team is as it was last match. Just have to replace the injured Romano. And I think I'm actually going to go with Newton on this front because, I mean, Steve Steve essentially is stationary and we can't, can't really get away with that lack of pace anymore. It's that bad. So as defensively and mentally useful as he actually is and the leadership qualities... Four pace, four acceleration in a match like this, away from home, just can't be relying on that. But since Boom isn't necessarily the strongest, we do kind of have to rely on someone who is a little bit stronger, a little bit pacier. It's essentially a toss-up between Newton and actually the promoted from the youth team, Josh King here, who doesn't quite have the strength, doesn't quite have the same physicals just yet, and the mental is obviously very lacking one leadership as well. I think Booms is exactly the same, isn't it? Both have one leadership. So I have to rely on someone with a little bit more leadership. Joe Tate is actually in the picture as well here, despite the fact I've listed him. Decent decent technicals. Leadership is 10. I'm actually not sure if Joe Tate's technically better for this. I'm going to put him on the bench. I kind of do feel sorry for Steve because I feel like those physicals aren't actually that big a detriment in real life, I would imagine. But apparently we're the underdogs, but not by much, though. You kind of do lose out quite a lot by having Romano out of the game, but... Hopefully, I mean, that's Gail Gamana, isn't it? How the hell has he ended up in the Vanarama? Ex-Newcastle, ex-Coventry, I think it was. I don't understand what he's doing down here, though. He's surely better than Vanarama as... <sighs> gets away with that a little bit. Sort of, maybe, not quite. Oh, my God. First goal of the season. Of course it is. Of course it's their first goal of the season. When, will he ever, when, when do we ever concede a goal that isn't that player's first goal of the season? <sighs> I mean, that, that's actually kind of a good, kind of decent... But that should not have been allowed to have been, been even a shot. We should not have even allowed that at all. He's a left wing back. That's why he was his first goal of the season. But can we can we stop having Haas a start at our end? Because it is just incredibly worrisome that something else is about to happen. I don't know who was at fault by the, that, by the way. I don't know who record tackled. I would like to see a replay of that once more. Giselle Griffiths. Lopez is in the box, sort of. Green can maybe have a crack from here. Kemp's is going to have a crack from here. He's, he's had a crack, and he's booted it past boot. Good Lord. That's even better. That's even better. Eight goals for the season for Kemp's, and that's why. That's even better than record's goal. Oh, it's a new record, if you if you will. <sighs> I feel so bad for that one. Green, Kemp's. Oh. I mean, I'm not exactly certain what boot was doing on the floor as he went for that, but we'll take it. I mean, our defensive line hasn't got a knock in terms of ratings for me to really identify who was at fault for that record goal. But, OK. Darcy is running backwards, which I like to see. Biro is running backwards, and that's just gone through our defence. He might have been offside. He is offside. He is offside. So I'm pretty bothered why they're even showing the highlight. Williams throw in. Alexander back to, back to Williams. Uh, he, he, is he offside? No, apparently not. Goal kick, though. It's worth noting we are on balance just because obviously we are playing slightly better opposition. So we're not going to go completely aggressive. Is this a, it's a free kick, isn't it? We're just taking forever to take it. Griffith's standing over it, though. Didn't realise he was our free kick taker. It's the bar. Wonderful. Newton looks a little tired already, but that might just be because of lack, lack of match fitness in the first place. But I'm not sure which is worse, lack of match fitness or just a lack of physical ability full stop. Can't believe he's missed that. Well, I can. He shot from a tight angle, and those very rarely go in. As Borrow takes over this, but I do suspect this highlight is actually over. 
Yep, that's half time. Griffiths is actually probably having the worst game of his season so far, which is odd, considering how many times he gets into the team of the week for Vanarama. We're not doing badly at all. If everyone continues to work hard, we'll win this. I think that's right. We have actually are the better team here, surprisingly. 6.4, 6.3. The defence has suddenly just got incredibly rubbish at some point. Not sure when this occurred. Even a cell's dying to fall back a little bit. As Birogamana stood over a free kick, this is just unfair. Got, it's gone over. What is he doing playing for Solihull Mold? I mean, admittedly, they were second last year, so that might be part of it. Can we, can we do something? Anything? I mean, if we take it back to York, that's not a huge deal. Nothing. Nothing is occurring in this second half. Right. Uh, 6.4. You're off. Sean Norton, 6.2. Yellow carded. Can I take him off? I'm going to have to. 6.2. Nacelle's not even playing well, but he's our best player, so I can't even really take him off. God. Oh, what do I even do here? Moke is 6.5. Not amazing. Ferguson 6.5. Not amazing. Another free kick for Birogamana as that hits Harry Wright and goes wide. How? When we have had... I mean, that's probably why, actually. How, when we've had the better of this game, have we got a slightly lower average rating? As this continues a little bit annoyingly, comes to clears, that should be the end of that highlight. It is. I'm going to have to take off our best player. I genuinely am. I'm going to have to take off Nacelle. We can't accept 6. I mean... Uh, no one, some of these players just really aren't playing that well. Burrow, that somehow fails to collect a fr throw in. How? How do you, do, how can you be that bad at throw ins? He was offside, was he? Apparently. Okay. We take it to a replay. Well done for proving them wrong. Everyone thought we were going to get beat. Not really. When do we have to play them again? 29th. No, that's, that's when it's been moved. We play them again in four days' time. Okay. Well, I'm not going to bring you that one, but I will bring you the next round if we get through that. If not, I have no idea. Where we'll slot back in, I have no idea where the next round is. I'll bring the draw, and that'll probably tell you when that match is. Oh, we've been drawn already. Blimey, that was quick. Sorry, I wasn't even paying attention. I was just clicking through it. Solihull Moors or York versus Salford. What a team kind of undergoing their own real-life road to glory in recent years. So the team that went up at Solihull Moors at his expense, which is kind of amusing for the narrative for them. But Salford, we're at home, though. I was kind of hoping for sort of like an ex-Premier League team on the lines of maybe Blackpool, Bradford, someone with like a big stadium so we could fill it out a little bit and get a little bit cash as a result. Coventry, I'm not sure who, how big Coventry Stadium is of the stadium situation for Coventry. Ipswich, of course, I was kind of hoping for someone like that. Considering that the board wanted me to get to the first round, I'm not too bothered what happens after this point. Should we get past, of course, Sunderland um, would have been nice. We're a home to Salford. Admittedly, our stadium is 9,000, so, and theirs is five, actually. So we actually do have technically a bigger stadium than Salford's. But of course, they, like I say, they've undergone their own road to glory in recent years in real life. So not doing too well in the game, though, in League Two. I just noticed that was 22nd for them. I'll just draw the rest of them. And I I'm curious to see who Lincoln got out of interest. Just, well, um, well, if you watched last episode, I did mention that in my household, Lincoln versus it, which is kind of a derby for us because... I, I'm from Lincoln and my family originally is from Norwich. So that's Norwich's rivals versus my local club. And I did kind of say how that's kind of like a cross household derby. And well, it, it's, it's happened. It's happened in the game. I mean, it happens anyway because they're in the same division twice. But that is kind of amusing. So it looks like it's going to be on the 9th of November, which would be this very interesting gap between Geisley and Gloucester which was kind of where I was aiming actually next time. I was actually kind of hoping to do either the Gloucester or the Kettering match at some point, just because I don't think they were going to feature... Yeah, Gloucester probably isn't going to feature in the second half, maybe, depending on how much these last ones are important. And I was planning to bring you Fars the Geisley in the second half of this. So yeah, if the next round is the ninth, then the next episode will be that and Gloucester. If not, it might be Gloucester in this FA Trophy match instead. So we'll see. If we can get past Sahel Moors, then that's what the next episode will be. Salford and Gloucester, or Gloucester in this unknown FA Trophy third qualifying round, potentially, because the last two matches of the season are Kettering and Bradford. I will avoid bringing you Kettering this time round. So until then, bruh.